Evil Access. I am your host, Evil Blonde, and you just saw some footage from here at the House of Blues from Strapping Young Lad Live. I'm here with Devin. So uh, we've got some questions for you. All right. <laughs> yep. All right, first up, um, what's the story behind the name Strapping Young Lad? <coughs> it's kind of interesting. Uh, well, I moved to England when I was in about 1994, and I joined a band there for a few years called the Wild Hearts. And, uh, that was just a term that while I was living there, it was kind of like a colloquial English term for, you know, fine upstanding young gentleman kind of thing. Yes. Right? And, uh, and so the irony of that, like in in uh, in, uh, in uh, reference to a real heavy metal band, I kind of thought was cool. Plus, you could call it S Y L. Plus, you could make a logo out of it. It's a cool name. But when I first told the record company about the name, and when I first told everybody, it was that's the stupidest name I've ever heard. It sounds like it's a gay thing. It's like you're. Just, Beating little boys or something. Like, no. <laughs> like an English term for a fine, upstanding young citizen. Like us. <laughs> they didn't get the irony at first, did they? No, they still don't. <laughs> um, well, I know you've got one live album, and then this is your fourth studio album now, now Alien, which mm -hmm. is out in stores. Make sure you check it out. Um, I was looking at your website, and on there it says this album is quickly going to redefine the meaning of extreme. Tell me, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, I don't think it has quickly redefined the meaning of extremes. So I don't think that's accurate. I mean, every time a record comes out, there's going to be hype somehow, right? Yeah. It's the best thing since like Brad has been nothing like this record since 1984. Just you wait till you hear it. You've been waiting for this. You've been drilling for it. You're going to love it. It's going to redefine the extreme. Then. It's just another record, folks. It's a heavy metal record where we there's a bunch of bald, big, fat guys screaming at you. That's us. Check it out. <laughs> um, what would you say are some major bands that influenced you? Influenced me? Yeah. Oh, God. Major events or major, like, bands? Like, bands. Oh, yeah. Well, I really got into, like, musicals when I was younger, you know, like, Andy Lloyd Webber and all that kind of fan of the opera, right. kind of <laughs> Cats, Jesus Christ Superstar, kind of over-the-top, kind of mm -hmm. broad strokes of emotion type of thing. And then, you know, there's the Judas Priest and the Wasp and the Iron Maidens and the Slayers and the Grim Reapers and the Metallicas and, you know, all that shit from the 80s that everybody had the shirts for and we were all heifers with. I was one of them, you know, I was one of the burnouts, so. And me and Jed and Byron, we all grew up in the same part of the town, so we all had the Iron Maiden shirts and the Slayer back patches and the whole work, so there was that. And, but before that, I really liked, you know, the Rhythmics and Taco and, you know, and all that kind of synthy sort of stuff. And, Men Without Hats and all that. And then I really got into ambient stuff, like Rapun, Zobia of France, and like the really crazy sort of thing. And then I really like black metal. I really like, you know, like the Immortals and some of the Dimmu stuff and like some older Sam Mayo stuff. And I just, whatever is good, it really doesn't matter. You know, I like country, I like some Christian stuff, I like some gospel stuff, I like some evil satanic stuff. I like some, it doesn't matter. As long as it's coming from someplace that's pure, then I can get a good feeling for it, so. Right on, all right, excellent. Um, I know you're involved with several side projects. Um, you do some producing. You've worked with bands like uh, Lamb of God and Soil Work, producing some things with them. Do you have some sort of alter ego <laughs> that keeps you all together, working all these things, keeps the <laughs> ideas fresh? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> well, uh, I think a lot of people are under the assumption that if you get into a rock and roll band or you tour in a heavy metal band or something that you can kind of party and, you know, hang out with groupies and eat steak and sleep all day and all that sort of stuff. But if you do that, you're probably only going to have one record. And then you're probably going to be working at McDonald's after that, right? So right. <laughs> any job that you're going to do, you got to do a good job. And so if you give a good nine, ten hours a day to metal, you can get a lot of shit done, right? So I just do that. Like, you know, four hours a day I'll work on strapping. A couple four hours I'll work on another project. And after years over, I got six, six, eight things that I've done, right? And I'm able to support myself with it. Not well, but I'm able to, you know, not work at McDonald's, so that's cool. Right, you're doing what you like, yeah, so yeah. that's so, important. Yeah, I'm blessed in that way. <laughs> right. Um, let's talk about your lyrics for a second here. Where, sure. where do you get the inspiration? Well, I guess there's a part of me that would like the world to be a really nice, harmonious, beautiful place where nobody does stupid shit to each other and everybody gets along and when a tragedy happens, everybody can band together for the common good, and, but it doesn't happen. And so the altruistic part of me, that part of me that really wants that, I think gets deeply wounded every time I see things like that. And 
my defense mechanism against sort of like turning inward and just retreating from it is just to, I don't know, like screaming at it, I guess. You know, and it's like, <laughs> but you know, like Strapping is the outlet for that. And you know, the, the Devin Townsend band, my other band, is the outlet for, you know, the other emotions, right? But as a human, you're kind of, you kind of got them both in there, right? So just be true to it, no matter what it is, and there it is. So right. Strapping is that end of it, and so lyrics reflect you know, so that sort of stress, I'm kind of over the top, like I can't believe what's going on, I can't take it. So therefore, it's like a whiteout. It's like, <laughs> Well, I know how that feels. Oh yeah, I think a lot of people do. <laughs> a lot of people, I'm sure, relate. Um, so what is kind of the, the difference then of emotions between the strapping and the Devin Townsend band? Well, uh, it's just the biggest opposite, right? Like, yeah. strapping is like, war music and DTB is like peace music, right? It's like strapping is sex music and DTB is love music, you know what I mean? It's like the difference between the two are like like the zero and the one or whatever, where it's just the same side, the same coin, two different sides, right? Right. <laughs> are there other musicians you'd like to work with in the future on any kind of projects? Uh, not really, I guess. You know, like... Uh, I've got, most of the time the people who I meet who are doing really cool things in the music industry are cocks, so it's like, <laughs> I prefer to hang out with my buddies back home. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I hear you there. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's cool that we're playing shows and it's cool that we're getting out there and everything, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a job, right? So it's an awesome job. I'm so thrilled and blessed to be a part of it, but it's a job, so, you know, it's like, I want to only associate, not associate, I want to jam with people that are cool, cool people that just want to play music, right? So. Um, is there any truth to the rumors that there might be a, some sort of DVD coming out in 2007? Well, we just released one, uh, like a couple of, like last year, I guess. Oh. But we'll probably release a real, a real good one, like a better one, further on down the line. The thing is, it's dropping such a tentative band, you know what I mean? Like, it's a band by a string. And it has been for 10 years, you know what I mean? It's not like we're like this and, you know, what makes the chaotic, like, I'm really into chaos. I'm really into that concept, right? So, I guess, metaphorically, strapping represents that by always being ready to explode at any minute, right? So, <laughs> right. that's where we are. So, I'd like to say we got another record or another DVD, but who knows, right? Like, right. could end tomorrow, so. <laughs> well, let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> uh, We hope you stay around longer than that. Sure. Thanks. Um, <laughs> What do you think is your, your favorite Strapping Young Lad song, just to date? What's your favorite? Infodome. The last song on the new Alien, though. Mm -hmm. It's like a bunch of noise that nobody else in my band likes. <laughs> but to me, I'm really proud of it because if you want heavy, that's heavy to me. That's like horrifyingly heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and I like the song, I like the song Skexis, too, on the new record. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I like whatever I'm least bored of, so. At this point, I'm least bored of the new record, so most of my favorites are off of that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> is there um, a, one of those songs you like to play live that gets like maybe the crowd really fired up, or it's just a lot of energy? The crowd never gets fired up for us. Yeah, today I don't know what we're I don't know, either, right? Really. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like... I'm sorry that we disappointed you. Oh, no, it's cool, it's cool. But it's usually like that, you know? We just play crazy stuff and everybody's like... You know, so... Well, maybe it's these strange gestures and faces that you're making on stage. <laughs> I don't know. That might have something to do with it. Maybe. I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> no, it's great. It made for fantastic pictures and videos. Oh, yeah, it's fun. So you guys will see it here. <laughs> but um, what else can we look forward to from uh, Strapping Young Lad? Besides chaos and... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> He's stumped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe more music. Maybe more tours. Maybe. Yeah, some more <laughs> awesome looking pictures of us. <laughs> we'll make sure to be there. Thank you. <laughs> um, you got any songs left over from recording Alien that might appear somewhere else? We did a version of What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah. And that, that may show up somewhere. All right. Because we made it really smarmy. Like, we took out any subtlety that made it kind of cute. And we made it just vulgar. All right. <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> Do you have any messages you like to give to any aspiring musicians? Like some kind of advice? Bring your own lube. Because <laughs> it ain't going to be provided for you. <laughs>
<laughs> Among many other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, be prepared to get screwed and then screwed again. And then once you feel like you can't be screwed, you're going to screw again. And the only way that you're ever going to do anything is if you get past that and keep going. Right? Perseverance is the way because it is horribly bad. How many times you get screwed? You're going to get screwed. <laughs> it's going to so happen. So be prepared. Bring your own loop. And don't give up after it. <laughs> All right, how about any last parting words for your Rebel Access fans who are going to be seeing this tonight? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> 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 All right.